Right, so it's actually been a while since I did another video on the ENV. I've just been a bit busy, I've been working, I've been doing things and other projects and I haven't really thought about doing one. Um, but the last video on YouTube is when I was, when I just got it and I was testing the rapid charging and getting used to all of that. But since then, I've been busy, busy, busy. I've, um, I've converted the back of it into a camper. As you can see, I'll give you a proper tour at some point, but there's space underneath. I've built it so that um, so that the base can just come out if I really need to use it as a van. So it's just makeshift. I've got a few bits in there just to make it like just an old chest of drawers um, and things. Just so I've got storage space, but it all comes out very, very easily. So um, that's the back. And what we've um, what we're doing at the moment is we're actually driving down to Devon we're going to be down there for the summer um, for July and uh, just be near the coast and get away from all the inland pollution which is kind of getting to me quite badly at the moment but I just wanted to do a video I've um, I've actually done I mean we're heading to we're heading to Honiton next um, to the first point that I may actually pay for but I've managed to do this journey um, on Tesco pod points. So um, uh, I haven't had to pay a penny with the way that the fuel's going at the moment. Even electric uh, charging on the rapids have gone up to 57, 60p. And uh, that's, that's kind of coming up to what you would have paid for a petrol car before the prices went up. So I just thought, okay, I'm not in a rush. I'm going to take my time today. I started at 9.30 in the morning. I'm just south of Bristol, uh, Barton-on-Sea, I think. I'm not sure. But, uh, but yeah, so I've just, I'm here, I'm charging up, I'm doing my thing. And as soon as that's, uh, as soon as I'm up for the three hours in the car park, I'm going to get going. Now, the good thing about these old British gas vans is that they have the Rapid Plus. They have the 6.6 kilowatt hour um, charger that's the wrong button um, as you can see I've still got 12 bars of battery but on Leaf Spy for some reason Leaf Spy says that it's at 82% state of health and I haven't lost a bar yet so one of the two one of the two is faulty um, and where is it there we go so I've got a six I've got the six kilowatt um, charger on board as well so when I'm charging at Tesco points it it will charge relatively quickly maybe about the same the same rate as what the GWiz charged at so uh, when the GWiz was charging the trailer I'm actually getting the same charge speed and same range that I would have got with the GWiz so it's not a big deal I can just relax for a couple of hours and then move on to the next charge point so we're getting there it's all we're, we're it says two hours 30 but um, it takes an hour for the last 3% or something, so um, we're, well on the way to, we're well on the way to getting there. <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, that's where I am at the moment. I'm going to head down towards Honiton and I'll keep you posted. So here we are at this uh, cool little farm place um, just in Honiton. So I've done around 160 to 180 miles without paying a penny. So this is the first, this is the first rapid charge that I'm taking on this journey. Um, we're pretty much near Devon now. I'm probably going to park up in a nice little spot that I know of in the woods up in Honiton. Well, just past Honiton. Um, but yeah, so these are just hiding here. <laughs> I usually find them at McDonald's and Starbucks and all that, but this is actually a really nice location for it. So there we go, it's doing its thing. Um, so, oh, what's it charging at? 29.9. I'm surprised it's not doing the full 45 kilowatts, um, which is strange. But, uh, well, it's doing what it's doing. And I'll have a charge soon, and I'm going to go and park up for the night. But whilst we're doing this, I just thought I'd give you a little tour. 
of the camper itself so as you can see um, there's the back part with the um, with the uh, makeshift bed now there's a bit behind here that little bit there comes out into this space and that gives me the um, the whole area for the bed to go out here and I've got a table just there which will basically clamp into there and uh, yeah so there's the, there's the drawers all my clothes all my clothes go in there and um, and if we come around the back we've got more storage under here so that's the cool box with the milk and everything and then um, yeah that's the bed part and I've got my fishing gear um, some bits in the back and my water tub so yeah so that's um, that's pretty much the setup so it's uh, it keeps things keeps things organized and it's very quick to pull things out and organize things when I need to when I need to use it as a van um, but you can see in that corner down there there is a 240 volt um, inverter and um, that connects up to the 12 volt battery and when the van is, when the van ignition is on um, it's actually pulling the power out of the um, 24 kilowatt hour battery underneath the van so I've got all that power to use when I'm off grid somewhere and um, yeah and then and then under here if I pull the laptop out of the way you've got all your all the uh, all the cooking and cutlery I just broke the box <laughs> um, but yeah so there's all my that's an induction hob cooker I've got an induction hob in there I mean induction hob kettle sorry um, and then I've got my blender that will plug into the inverter all of this will just go straight into the inverter and jobs are good and um, so yeah so I don't need to worry about carrying um, wood and all of that with me yeah, it'd be nice when this place is open I think they have a cafe and what not imagine if all the electric charge point stations are like this instead of service stations with McDonald's and all the junk so peaceful this place just gets better and better look at this little door and we come out and into an orchard. <laughs> and we've got our nettle seeds coming out. Are those nettle seeds or nettle flowers? Let's see. Hmm. But anyway, the nettle seeds are adaptogenic and got a lot of nice little properties to them. Um, so adaptogenic, it will um, help your mood and things like that. But nettles are one of those superfoods that were just completely underutilised. And over here, we've got the Japanese rose, I think it was. And these rose hips, once they ripen, so nice and juicy. And um, they're amazing, they're like a native citrus fruit in flavour. Hello. Hey you. Here you go. Made a friend. <laughs> yeah? Wow, look at what we got growing in here. Well <laughs> the cats come back. <laughs> but look at this. We have, we have pineapple weed, pineapple weed, so good, so good, you give it a crush and a smell and it literally smells like pineapples, <laughs> do you like the smell, do you like the smell, <laughs> you, know, you just want to fuss, 
You just want a big fuss. Hmm? Look at them, he's so beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> and we've also got common hogweed growing in this hedgerow. So much, so much to forage. And common hogweed seeds in their green state like this are almost cardamom flavour. And when they dry out, they go like orange peel. So um, they're very utilisable in different things. If, I like to dry them out and then powder them and use them in desserts and things like that. But uh, it looks like they've got a vineyard in here too. Amazing. Ooh, are those artichokes? He's coming. He's following me around. Come on. <laughs> Let's have a look. I think we've got foxgloves, I think. And then, yes, we do. Look, we have artichokes, which are, I believe, related to thistle. But look at that. Look at all these artichokes. If it wasn't in a car park, I might have been tempted, but I think they're a bit too far gone now. Anyway, in order to use. <laughs> amazing, amazing, beautiful little location. There he is. <laughs> How's this for an evening view? <clears throat> and I'll wake up to it too. Look at that. So peaceful. I thought it'd be busy this time of year, but it's quite empty, as you can see. <laughs> well, there we go. I've got to Honiton, and I'll probably head down to the ocean tomorrow. So for now, good night. So good morning. <laughs> I'm just giving you a quick show of how the um, bed comes out. It was a really nice, it was a really nice sleep here, really quiet, and um, yeah, so this is the bed. Um, it folds out there, and um, as you can see, uh, it's, it's quite cosy, quite cosy. So that just all goes in there like that. And uh, yeah, I've got the full length of the van for sleeping in then. Now what I was going to show you was this um, inverter. I realised I hadn't actually done a video on it before. And um, I mean, I mean yesterday. I yeah, Yesterday I forgot to show you the full extent of it. So this is hooked into the, to use off of the 24 kilowatt hour battery. Now how that works is that you've got these two cables coming out. The black one is grounded to the seat um, bolt behind there. Um, scraped a bit of the paint away to do that and then the cables run the, the positive runs under this seat part uh, I don't know if you can see under there I don't think you can but it goes out through the back well out through the bulkhead and you can see it coming through here there's also the switch for the driving lights the driving daylight lights and then um, and here we are so that can the positive is hooked to a fuse, it's a 125 amp fuse, and that's uh, hooked into the positive. Now the driving daylight um, the lights I showed you in a different video, but you can turn those off by um, with a switch that I've put inside the dash, and um, that means I can use the car, I can turn it on, use the power, without having to worry about, um, without having to worry about uh, running the battery down, well, running the battery down off the uh, driving lights, and also at night time you don't want that really showing. So the daylight driving light hooked up to a switch just under here. Now if you look at my previous video on how to wire it all up, um, Glenn, and Glenn Hudson has also done, this is where I got it from, um, seeing what Glenn Hudson had done, but as you can see the driving lights are now turned off, and um, that means that now the car is on, and I can leave it on all night if I really wanted to. And then that enables me to run this little thing off of the main battery pack underneath the car and uh, 
yeah, what more could you want? You've got an onboard leisure battery and you can run anything up to 1500 watts off of the DC to DC converter that is built into the unit here. And, um, and yeah, so as long as you don't go over 1500 watts, you're not putting a strain on it. And uh, you can just keep running off of the main battery. So it's the perfect, it's the perfect camper. And then there's my um, cable box, which I just kind of, I put on top of the battery and just leave it there. <laughs> like this, it just, uh, it just stays there. And I've got all my cables in there for three pin and type two. And there we go, all done. <laughs> But that's it, that's how the inverter's wired up, just so that you can get an idea of um, what you need to do if um, if you do go that route. And it's very simple, like you could run two, neg you could run the negative through as well just to confirm a ground, but I found that the negative hooked up to the seat um, bolt, I scraped it away, scraped it away the paint so that it gave it a good ground connection. I've not had any problems with it, doing it that way, so um, yeah. There we go, there we go.